G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here, and it's a thrill to talk to you today about how I've set up my Nikon Z8. It's brand new, and so I pulled it out, I set it up, and these settings can apply to a Z9 as well, or even a Z9. Um, also, the footage, as you'll see, is a tiny bit shaky. The reason is the way I set it up, it was all connected, so every time I move the bench, it moved the thing, but I've tried to do all I can. Uh, so that's the first thing you need to know. The second thing you need to know is they're my settings. And so you may go, that's not how you should do it. And you're welcome to your opinion. And please put it in the comments below. Uh, but this is how I've done it with the hope that it will help you um, establish your settings. So without further ado, let's get into it, shall we? So we'll start at the top with the shooting menu bank. Go A, off, go all the way down here. I need to change this and I change it to RM8. <laughs> Primary slot selection. Gonna go my CF and XQD card slot. Secondary slot function. Let's go back up. Image area. Gonna choose FX because it's a full frame camera. So make the very most out of that. Tone mode. That is new. And I'm gonna go SDR standard tones. That way I can choose them later on. Image quality. I've already selected raw. Raw recording is on. High efficiency star. I reckon is the best option for you to use the least amount of space but have the highest quality iso sensitivity settings and i'm going to turn the auto iso off now the reason i'm doing that is because the denoise function on the lightroom is outstanding it doesn't matter what you set the iso sensitivity to if this is set off white balance i'm going to go kelvin i could choose color temperature and i'm going to go 550 Set picture control. I'm going to go to standard. That way, all these matrices are set and standard that I can edit from rather than having variable options as we go through. Manage picture control. No need to do that. Color space, RGB. Active D lighting, off. Long exposure, noise reduction, off. When you shoot long exposures, it basically processes the noise out of your raw file after you've taken the shot and it takes the same amount of time. So you take a 20 second exposure and you don't have to wait 20 seconds for this to kick in. So it just seems uh, it seems pointless to do that and a waste of time when you want to shoot, especially if you're shooting long, long exposures. High ISO NR is the norm. Vignette control is normal. Diffraction compensation on. Auto distortion control on. Skin softening off. I like to do that in post. I might have a play with that later on. Portrait impression balance off. Photo flicker reduction on, because it's nothing worse than getting lines throughout your shot when you're shooting. High frequency flicker reduction on. Metering, I'll change that as I go when I shoot. Flash mode, I uh, will work out flash modes later on. Focus mode, I'll put it on continuous at the moment, but I will change that on the go, just like I'll change the AF area mode. And the subject direction options. Let's see what we've got. People, animal, vehicles, airplane, subject detection off. So I'm going to put it on auto for now, but I will change that when I'm running gunning. Vibration reduction off has no lens attached to it. Auto bracketing is a function I can use later on. All right, let's go to video recording. Shooting menu bank, I'm going to choose A. Extended menu banks off. Storage folder, good. Nikon Z8. I don't know what the C stands for in there. File naming. Let's go RM8 again. Destination. And this is when you can choose which card slot has your video uh, in it. I'm going to put it into the CFS Express for the time being. Video file type. This is where you choose the quality that you want. And you can go look at that. My goodness. This format is for video that will be edited on a high performance computer. I have a high performance computer, so I'm going to go 10 bit. Actually, what I'm going to do for this is I'm going to select the 8 bit and I'll move into 10 bit for certain things because I am, I, I, I take a variety of different videos from time to time, but when I do a video project, I will change that again. Frame size, frame rate. So this is where you choose between 1080p and then 4K and then 8K. So I'm going to go 4K and 
that's slow motion 120 frames a second and I like to shoot on 24 frames a second at 4k but I will change that again later on and as we go depending on what I want to achieve video quality is high image area I'm going to choose FX again extended oversampling off ISO sensitivity just going to take this down to 64 because I can white balance Kelvin carried over from the photo before set picture control standard white balance good I can change that later on manage picture control uh, it's good don't need that active D lighting off high ISO normal vignette control normal diffraction compensation on auto distortion control on skin softening off yep we've done all this video flicker reduction auto so it makes up its mind I'm going to turn that on metering focus mode we'll change that later on area mode we can change that later on as we're shooting subject detection options is automatic to the look at this animals people and vehicles and airplanes Woohoo! electronic vibration reduction this is new on the z8 um for the time being i'm going to keep it off i imagine it's an in-body cropping mechanism microphone sensitivity i like to go manual and 15 that sounds good it's not peaking until i yell at it maybe maybe 13 it does depend on what sort of shooting you're doing attenuator off frequency response wide wind noise reduction off you can put that on and it kind of like it, it works really well but it cramps your audio a little bit so i just use it specifically if it's really windy mic jack power plug in on headphone volume 15 time code record time codes I'm not going to do that external record control high res high res zoom off Got to work out what these things are. On, off, on, off. I'm not even sure what that is. It sounds fun, but I'm not going to put it on for the time being. All right, let's get to the custom settings menu. See, I'm using custom setting bank A, so you can have a setting B and a setting D and a setting C. You remember, if we go back here, I can choose shooting bank menu, and I can choose which one I want. That refers to just here. So I'm going to shoot with A, and let's get into focus. Put that on release so af activation this is one of the parts i like to use a back button focus and at the moment that means the shutter button uh, focuses but if i go down to here to af on this means this focuses so i select that focus point persistence is auto limit af area mode selection and let's just make sure all these are selected all these are the options I get when I access my autofocus menu. Focus mode restrictions, no restrictions, thank you very much. Focus point wrap around, it means it goes right around the screen then comes on the other side, I think that's a handy thing. Focus point display, I'm gonna leave as is. Built in AF assist illuminator on, focus peaking, I'm gonna turn that on. Focus peaking sensitivity is set to two, I like red as a color. Focus peaking is when your photo turns up here, the bits that are in focus are peaked with red. So that's how you know what that is. And focus point selection speed norm. All right, moving into the B menu. Happy, 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 happy. Center weight stand area, happy. Fine tune optional exposure, keeping that on no, keeping that on off. A lot of the metering exposure I actually change whilst I'm shooting, depending on what I'm shooting. D. Shutter release button A E L off. Self timer is uh, those sort of options. I just access them when I'm when I'm shooting. Sometimes you want to do something special, and so you can actually um yeah fiddle around with that if that's helpful for you. You can actually get a number of shots and then crank that up to nine. So you can take nine shots in a row. It's really good for when you've got family portraits and you can put a timer on you can get the family portrait and say it's going to take 10 shots or nine shots in a row with half a second interval so make sure you smile in one of them power off delay now this is fascinating so if i have my playback and image it gives me 10 seconds and i can choose how long that lasts for my playbacks usually um usually pretty good 10 seconds all these take up more power i'm going to leave that at 10 seconds my menus turn off after one minute 
Um, my picture review is four seconds. And standby timer is 30 seconds. Look, I'm gonna leave it how it is. I'll fiddle around because I'm sure there's particulars in there that I'll change after using this camera for a little while. Continue shooting speed. I change this while I'm uh, on the run. Maximum shots per burst, infinity, come on. Pre-release capture options, pre-release burst. Oh, this means you can shoot, you can uh, grab some photos before you actually grab some photos. I might put that on. Oh, geez. Like, I'm going to be shooting Ospreys this afternoon, so I think it might be good to do that, but I don't want it on all the time. Pre-release burst max. All right. I'm going to have a play with that when we get out in the field. Sync release mode options. That's fine. Extended shutter speeds. That's what I'm after. That chat means I can do extended long exposure up to 900 seconds, which is 15 minutes. Yes, please. Very happy about that. Limited selected digital area. I'm gonna take off DX. Um, yep, sit with them. That's handy. File number sequence is on. View mode, photo live, view the camera. I sometimes change that when I'm doing flash photography in the studio, but that's gonna stay on there like it is for the time being. Starlight view is great for Astro. I'm not doing Astro at the moment, but I do use that. I will use that and I will use that later on. I've got a video about those three things on the Z9 um, under Astro photography on my channel if you're interested. Gonna view all in continuous mode. Release timing indicator, type B. Lines appear at all four edges of the screen when a picture is taken, which is really cool. So you have these lines to show you that a photo is taken. It's really handy. Um, you can go, uh, the screen goes dark when a picture is taken. I don't like that because you lose focus of what and attention on what you're shooting. Um, and then, um, what do we got? Type C is lines appear at the left and right edges of the screen. But type B seems to suit me really well because I do silent. Um, shutter speed you can put the shutter speed on silent and so when you're taking photos you want to make sure that you've actually taken a photo it's good to have a visual indicator oh, i'm not sure what that is so we will leave it like that for the time being image frame grid type this is what you can you see when you look through your viewfinder so i'm going to go 16 by 9 i sometimes have it on 5 by 4 um so if i go 16 by 9 that's a YouTube shot. So I can just, it's just an overlay that it puts on so you can take a shot for a thumbnail, for example, for um, YouTube. <laughs> this is your virtual horizon. That's an indicator like that. So you have these options. I always choose that one because that would just be a nightmare to look at. So type A it is. Now this I'm a little bit fussy in particular about. Some of you might not care or, or worry too much. When you look through to take a photo, you have this display and this display and this display and this display and this display. And I find it very helpful to have all five there. And you access that by this display button just here when you're looking through. And so it, this one, for instance, is a white screen with black writing on it or a black screen with white writing on it. But this one, you have the photo in the background and you have the little square in the middle, which tells you where you're focusing. That has nothing on it, so it has no distractions at all, which you can access should you wish to choose. I frequently shoot from this display three, because I find display two doesn't have the histogram or the um, leveling, and display one is too noisy, it just stresses me out. All right, custom viewfinder shooting setting. So this is monitor, this is the back of the screen. This is when you're looking through the EVF. Oh, look at this. Oh, you can just add whatever you like to it. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Okay, um, take out the detail. That's good. So the detail is just the file name, and I can custom build. Oh, bang on center. Yeah, center weight. Yeah, I think that's helpful. I know I used to use a framing grid, but I don't anymore. And the histogram, you can have that on there too. That's display one. Now display two. I can actually go into and I can take out everything. Let's just say I want that with a center grid. Oh, that's good. I like that. Display three. Yep, simple. Um, I should have one with all the detail because it can, can be really helpful. Have a bit of fun. See what it's like. Display four, nothing. All right, I'm happy. You happy? It's up to you what you do. High frames per second viewfinder display on and 
off. I'm going to keep it off. Flash setting. Most of my photography is not flash setting, so I will change that when I come to it. All right, customize info. This is always fun. Now, everyone has a different preference of what theirs looks like. My particular preference will be different to your particular preference. I can guarantee it. So what I like to do in this first one, and you just can go through and choose which one you like. Ah, oh, what should we go? I'm gonna go release mode. Then I'm gonna go white balance. Then I'm gonna go matrix metering. Matrix metering. Here, I'm gonna put silent photography in, so I can just jump to being silent when I need to. Uh, I'm gonna keep that at auto focus area. I'm actually gonna go white back to white balance. I'm gonna change this. I saw skin softening in here somewhere. There it is. I can just turn that on if I need to. How handy is that? Focus mode, that's really handy. Autofocus and manual focus. Uh, what's that, vibration reduction. I always have mine on, but I might keep it on. Shooting menu bank, nah, it's, all right, let's go tone mode. I think I might need to play with tone mode. Exposure compensation. Let's put portrait impression balance on for that. Vibration reduction, shooting menu bank. Um, I might play with that later on. Custom controls, shooting. Oh, I see, I can access my custom controls that I set up. Oh yeah, let's keep that on, that's really handy. Uh, I might actually put that here. Custom control. If I put it at the edge, it's easier for me to locate when I need to and when I'm in a hurry. Yeah, I just, I just don't use that. So I'm gonna go to time-lapse video because I've been doing a lot of that lately. And for here, I might choose something like Interval timer shooting. Yep. Perfect. Done. Well, this is when he, this is where we get to fiddle around with all our buttons and make sure all our buttons are doing the things we want our buttons to do. So this one, I am going to select playback because I use it all the time to play back. This one is going to auto focus. That means the bottom button, I can change my focus mode and my auto focus area mode, which I find really, really handy. Uh, it doesn't have a battery grip, so I'm not going to worry about that. This little button up here is the last component to making sure your autofocus works on the back. So that will be there. This is my function button here. I might change the metering. That might be handy to have the metering function just here. Display is display. Uh, it's on the battery grip. Don't need to worry about it. Um, that's the OK button. And I have that as reset, which resets the focal point to the very center of the screen. Exposure compensation. That's fine. Recording on and off. ISO. Back button. That's fine, happy with that. Yep, that's what I want, my front dial and my back dial to achieve those things. Sub-command dial. Oh, I see, you can actually hold uh, the um, exp exposure metering down and you can get, um, you go back and forward on your front or back and back one actually zooms. That's handy. Uh, lens, not gonna worry about them right now. Good, done. Custom controls for playback. I'm gonna go filtered playback. Function button two is off. I should start experimenting with those. You can do so much more with these if you want to. Frame advance, so I found this really, really handy. It means I can advance the frames using the back scroll button when I'm in playback. And the front button, that's good too. And that's video playback, so you can jump forward 10 seconds. It's very handy when you take a video and you want to jump back or forward and, and see how you went in that particular frame. Control lock, lock shutter, speed, aperture, focus, point selection. Oh, that's kind of handy. So if you want, you can actually lock it all up. I'm not going to do that, but it's a good option to have should I want it. You can reverse the way the things work. And I used to get confused with one, but I got so used to it over the time that now when I reversed it, I was reversing, double reversing. It was just a mess. So. If it's the first time buying a Nikon camera and it's unintuitive on your which way you should scroll your front and back scroll wheels, change it here. Otherwise, leave it alone. Well, do what you like, but I'd leave it alone. I did leave it alone after bucking about with it. Okay, good, good, good. Control ring response is high. That's on your lens and it's super handy when you want to change your aperture or your focus or a few other things. I have high because you know, I like to get to things pretty quick, but your personality may be different to mine. Full frame playback flicks. Yeah, I've just left as is. Prefer sub selector on. All right, moving along. Video custom eye menu. Uh, we can change all of these things. Oh, I'm actually pretty happy with these. They're good ones. 
Often they're not. Often they're a bit strange, but no, they're good. I'm happy. But again, you go through the same process as you did with the shooting menu. This is just for the video menu. Your custom controls. Yep, you can have a play with them. I've shown you how to do that now and what the, each ones mean. And this is very customized. It's very personal. So whatever you'd like to choose, I'm gonna leave mine as is for the time being. I find as I shoot and I go through, I realize that I want controls to do certain things that I didn't realize at the time. So that's where you come to fix that up. Control lock, we've just seen this. This is the video option of all the same things before. Uh, it's good, I want all those options. Thank you very much. Focus mode restrictions, no restrictions. AF speed, AF tracking sensitivity. Yep, I'm happy with them as is. And again, you can come back. And again, you can come back afterwards and have these set up differently if you want them set up differently. Zebra pattern or zebra pattern, but zebra pattern I find um, is just a bit annoying. It just it just annoys me. But when I get my monitor working, I'm probably going to use that. It basically where it's overexposed or white, it just has these zebra lines and you want no zebra lines. Or you can control the zebra lines to achieve what you want. And you can change the uh, pattern and tone range there uh, put a grid type up if you want uh, it's just your, your standard three by three um, and again same as what we talked about before when you film in video it automatically um, gives you a viewing envelope of 16 by 9 anyway brightness information display uh, the histogram so you can choose how your brightness is communicated I'm so familiar with the histogram I'm staying with it custom monitor it's the same about what we talked about before and you can choose them to be specific to what you want i'm really happy with those for video because the way i think about video and operate with video is different to the way i think and operate with photography so that suits me fine custom viewfinder shooting display and again you can choose what you like there um, and you just click along click to the right you see my thumb click to the right to get more options and you select which options you want red record frame indicator on Woo, we're done. All right, we're nearly, we're cruising along because we're nearly there, honestly. Playback display options. I like to have the focus point on when I play a photo back. I like the exposure info on when I play a photograph back. I like to have an option where I can just look at the picture. So this means when you re recall a photo, you can then scan through it and each photo, um, you can press your display button and it takes on and off these various things. So for example, if you wanna have shooting data, which is all that stuff all around the thing, you can have that and it can be an option that you can look at when you finally get there. Delete pictures from both slots on dual format recording good 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 auto rotate pictures that function although it's not really clear auto rotate pictures which is off yeah so if i turn it off when i turn my camera the if i take a panorama it'll stay and fill the screen and i can look at it with the fullness of the screen rather than it flipping to be half of the screen which is kind of really really annoying told you playback menu is done settings uh, language is English, you need to set your time and uh, date, monitor brightness, three will do for now. Monitor colour balance, oh, some ibises I took yesterday, <laughs> when, when I pulled out the camera because there were all these ibises in a row, which looked really really cool for black and white, I'm hoping, and all the things about my camera that I take for granted didn't work, which is why I'm setting it up today. Uh, this is all fine, auto rotate, info display, on, AF tuning options, off non CPU lens data number one safe focus position. Uh, I mean, after you turn it off and turn it back on again, no, that just annoys me. Auto temperature cut out, become hot to the touch, use a tripod or like. All right, you know, we'll leave it at auto temperature cut out. There's rumors that the Z8 overheats, so we'll play about with that and see how we go. Sensor shield behavior at power level. Sensor seal stays open or shield closes. Always shield closes, folks. Always shield closes. That way when you change your lens, you don't get all the dust and gunk stuck in there. Clean image center. I always do it at clean at shutdown. Yes, please. Image comment off. Copyright information off. You can uh, fill your details in there. Oh, seriously, I gotta do it again? <sighs> good that's done attach copyright information i may as well attach it after i've done it iptc don't know what that is voice memo options no thanks camera sounds shutter sound yes beep off yes volume is good pitch is good i like it 
silent mode at the moment it's off but we can change that on the info menu and i do every so often when it's required touch controls are on what's that glove mode oh, wow i don't know what that is but that sounds cool doesn't it hdmi that's all good to go use connection priority assign remote i uh, haven't got a remote conformity marketing battery info 80% left, 132 shots have been taken, I think that is. The age of the battery is brand new, always handy to have that. USB power delivery is on, so if you want to plug a cable into the side and power your camera, you can. Energy saving photo mode is off, because that would annoy me. Slot empty release lock, that's okay. Save load menu settings, reset all settings, no thanks. Firmware version, I need to do that, so I will check that out afterwards. And folks, we're done. You can also choose your My Menu and set up your essential uh, functions that don't feature in your information quick get to. So I'll leave that up to you, but you do that by adding an item and saying, I want to choose one from the photo shooting menu. Actually, oh, and then <laughs> interval timer shooting. Let's do that. Saved. So if I go to my menu, oh, I need a lens on there, but uh, that is a great way of uh, accessing interval time of shooting. You can put a whole host of other things there if you just want to get to them quickly. So I hope this has been helpful and I'd love to hear the way that you set up your Z8 in the description below. So please let us know all about it down there. Give this video a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.